Repent or perish or die. Repent or die. Repent or perish or die. Repent, repent, or perish or die. What was the first thing Satan attacked in the Bible? What was the first thing that he attacked in the Bible? He attacked the marriage. Thank you. You see that? Satan attacked the marriage first. You don't read about him attacking the whole nation first. He attacked what? Marriage. Because out of marriage comes what? Children. That's the beginning of a nation. So Satan will attack your marriage. <laughs> but don't let the devil get on you. So watch this. Let's deal with the second part that, um, that, that kills the building of sisterhood in its truth. And that's that good old gossip. It was a show on TV, I think, called Gossip, wasn't it? What was it? Oh, you watched it? Oh, okay. Yeah, you knew about any. Huh? All right, just playing. Hey, pull up that first video real quick. Gossiping is infamous amongst Israel. We don't even realize it's gospel. We don't break it down very simple and plain. What is gossiping? Go on in and bring out our sister right here. Play that thing. I ain't want to gossip, so you ain't heard that from me. Hey, how you doing? It's me, Benita Patrol. Child, I was on my way home from playing bingo. Got caught up here in these here riots. People acting like he taking everything they ain't glued to the ground. Of course, Miss Benita always had herself some. Didn't have to wait for Ron King to get bopped upside the head to get me a love song. Of course, you wouldn't want to look a gift horse in the mouth, huh? Oh, there go my baby Cisco Peterson. Hey, Cisco, how you doing, honey? That's a fine TV you got there. And don't feel bad about taking it, because I know you never stole a single thing in your whole life. <laughs> That's a born thief there. When his mama gave birth to him, he ran off with the placenta. No justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. No hey, peace. Denise, look at you, girl, regular little politician. And I hear you, baby. No justice, no peace. <laughs> More like no $20 bill, no peace. That's the spirit of majority of our sisters. We don't even realize. They, they, made, mo they made mockery of it. The Wayne has put that in there because that's how the unrepentant black and Hispanic woman is. We don't even realize. We'll be saying one thing and it's a, say something disrespectful and say, hey, hey, baby, you didn't hear that from me, though. So watch this. Let's deal with the gospel. Give me Ecclesiasticus. 19, verse 6. Let's start there. Ecclesiasticus. And you know Brothers Gospel, too. I got some good examples for, um, for Brothers, too. To, that gossiping. Pull, pull up the definition on gossip real quick. Read that. Wait, wait, put it up. Check, check. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verse 6. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. It says, he that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. Strife is what? What's one word for strife? Plain word. B. 
beef. Beef! What's beef? Beef! beef. beef. Read the verse again. Yeah, absolutely. He that can rule his tongue without... I'm sorry. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. And shall he live that, without beef. What's beef? Beef is... Read. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. If you don't like... Babbling is just a whole lot of miscellaneous talk about nothing. If you don't like to hear that, you ain't going to be the person that drama come to, that beef come to, right? So watch this real quick. Definition gossip. of gossip. I want y'all to pay close attention to the letter C. Okay, letter C, definition of gossip. A person who habitually reveals personal. Read it again. A person who habitually reveals personal or sensational facts about others. Read it again, please. A person who habitually reveals personal. Habitually mean that, do it happen every once in a while? That's all the time, right? It says what, a person to do what? A person who habitually reveals personal or sensational facts about others. You know what that sensational facts is? That's when you add your own little twist on to something. You're telling an accurate story, then you put your own little slant to it to make the story sound a little bit more exciting. So watch this real quick. Keep that definition up because that's exactly what we want to see. I want you to read verse 6 um, through 9. Okay. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. Uh -huh. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. Uh -huh. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee. It, the, the Bible says, rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee. Read. And thou shalt fare never the worst. And you're going to be all right. But guess what? I'll tell you something, then guess what you go and do? Tell somebody else. I told you, though. What I told you got nothing to do with them. Read. Whether it be to friend or foe. Guess what? Whether that's your friend or your enemy. Whether it's your friend or your enemy. Both flip to the coin. The Lord said, don't rehearse nobody, what, what, what somebody told you to somebody else. Read on. Talk not of other men's lives. Read it again. Talk not of other men's lives. Read again. Talk not of other men's lives. So what is that talking about? I'm going to give you a good old example. Soldier, I mean, um, who who am I? I'm from the book. Soldier Cola. Something happened between me and Soldier Cola, right? I come and tell you what happened between me and Soldier Cola. What is that called? Did y'all know that's gospel? I don't need to know you got a problem with. Do you need to know I got a problem with? Do my problem with him got anything to do with you? Absolutely nothing. Is that some pressing information that you need to know? Absolutely not. How about me and Soldier Cola had a problem a year and a half ago? You've been here three months. My year and a half ago issue with Soldier Cola that we rectified, we both still here in the body trying to serve the Lord. Is that information that, I, that you just got to know? Nope. So why we got this going on amongst brothers and sisters? Real heavy amongst sisters. Go around telling folks stuff that shouldn't even know what happened. Hey, well, sister, why is you telling? Well, it's the truth. Is, is this a discussion on whether it was true or not? It's a discussion on why do they need to know about that? And the reason why they telling you all this information ain't because you such a good sister. You so, you know, um, 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 compassionate, you so understanding, you know, you got a good listening ear. That ain't what it is. And they, they try to hide it under, I'm, I'm just trying to warn you about this person that we so go. it don't happen to you. <laughs> you know what, all the, I'm finna decode all that BS real quick. You know what that is? I want you to hate that sister just like I do. That's what it is. Oh, and I don't, I don't hate her. No. Oh, Jesus. No, no. I don't. Yes, you do. That's hatred. Yes, you do. Because guess what? If I retell you that situation with me and Cola over a year and a half ago with your hot three months, how do you think that hot three months spirit is going to interpret that whole conversation? That Cola is a bad person. That Cola is a bad person. Do y'all understand that? 
That's evil. That's evil. Soon as I'm gonna say it again. Somebody come and tell you about something that has absolutely nothing to do with you, you're supposed to cut that off. Soon as it starts up, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's, what's this about? Do we got anything to do with me? I don't need to know about it. We got to be, stop being so thirsty for other folks' lives and affairs. But then when the thing, when the thing happened to you, now it's, uh, you had no problem hearing about everybody else's business. But sweet Jesus, somebody told what happened to you, I can't believe it. Okay. Why would she do I, I, Everybody's evil. Damn. <laughs> what about you when you was uh, entertaining all the nonsense? So watch this real quick. I want you to read that last verse again. Yes, sir. Verse 8. Whether it be to friend or foe, uh -huh. talk not of other men's whether lives. Whether it's your friend or whether it's the enemy of that person, you're supposed to be rehearsing or telling the other folks' lives and matters. Read. And if thou canst without offense, reveal them not. Uh -huh. For he heard and observed thee. And when time cometh, he will hate thee. Hold on. It says, for he heard and observed thee. You know that? Because guess what? As slick as y'all is, folks know who they told stuff to. Wait a minute, I only told you. How in the hell Soldier Cole I know about it? I didn't tell him. Who else had to tell him? A lot of folks are like, I don't know. I ain't got to know that. I don't know. I don't know. Well, damn, I mean, I guess the Holy Spirit of gossip is running around in there. It's the Holy Spirit of gossip. We got to quit tempting the Lord. Read verse 9. Verse 9. For he heard and observed thee. So when, they, when it's revealed that you told their business, which you had no right, no license to do, what's going to happen? And when time cometh, he will hate thee. Now that person, you do not put a spirit on that person now. That person growing good in the spirit, they forgot all of I forgot. So, Soldier Cole, I forgot all about what happened a year and a half ago. Now that old pain and hurt them re-came back up because of you. So watch this real quick. Stay in the same book. Give me chapter 28, verse 17 and 18. That's the only verse I want. Verse 17. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. It says the stroke of the whips maketh marks in the flesh. So you can hit with something. Mm -hmm. That's a physical wound right here that will heal. You punch me in my eye, depending on how hard you punch me, it might get swollen. It might be closed up shut. But it's going to heal at some point. But what's the latter, the latter part of that say? But the stroke of the tongue. But what comes out of your mouth? That evil sin in the world, sticks and stones may break my bones, but um, words don't hurt me. That's evil as hell. That's, that's, that's one of the biggest lies behind white Jesus. Is to say words don't hurt. How many, who agree with that? Who, who have words that hurt you? Words ain't hurt you? Who hand ain't up? Get, who, who words ain't never hurt you? Somebody that said something to you, you didn't give a damn. It don't exist. Words do hurt. Words stay with you. For some of y'all, it's better if somebody did hit you with a better sum. At least you know that once that pain is gone, <laughs> it's out of mind. But certain words, man, I'll never forget that person said something like that. Man. Keep that in mind. Read that verse again. Where is we at? Verse 17. 17. Yeah, read that again. Sirach chapter 28, verse 17. Watch this. You the can get, stroke, get this medicine. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh. Uh-huh. But the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. Breaketh the bones. Read. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword. Many folks done died in battle, read. But not so many as have fallen by the tongue. So that lets you know that the tongue is undefeated. It's the master warrior. A lot of folks done died behind words. A lot of folks done died behind words. Hey, who you said did it? He did it. Oh, no. You found out later. That means one of him. But he done got jacked up. It was a movie um, called... Um, What's that movie? Rosewood. How many of y'all seen Rosewood? That one lie from that devil, what happened? Thousands of blacks died. 
off one adulterous lie. Thousands of folks died. And the Bible is a true book. Read that verse again. Verse 18. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, uh -huh. but not so many as have fallen by the tongue. Well is he that is defended from it. Watch this. Well is he that can defend himself from it. How you going to defend yourself with it? And, by these laws. Read on. And have not passed through the venom thereof. Watch this. Stay in the same book. Give me chapter 33, verse 29. We still dealing with the gossiping spirit. Is that definition still up? A person who habitually reveals personal and sensational sensational facts about another's about another the book of Sirach chapter 33 verse 29 but be not excessive towards any and without discretion do nothing read again be but be not excessive towards any and without discretion do nothing what is that talking about help me out brothers come on what is that verse talking about uh to not overdo anything y'all heard that don't overdo anything. Guess what? It's so hard for Jake to tell a story as is. Ain't enough, you know? <sighs> I got to add something to it. What happened? I got into an accident. Not just, man, I was coming up the thing, coming down and joined that bail. Let's get me around it. That ain't what happened. Ain't nowhere near what happened. <laughs> oh, you should have seen the face she made. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You should have seen the way she looked at me. Her eyeballs was going all the way up here, and it pissed me in my chest. And I felt, what, what the hell are you talking about? She got superpowers, she's an X-Men? It says, do not be excessive. Read it again. But be not excessive towards any. Uh huh. And without discretion, do nothing. And don't do nothing without it being. Th Think about what you're finna say. Think about what you're finna do. Think about, hey, you know what? If I tell this person business, what if they find out I told them their business? How, how, how now is we don't act around each other? It's going to be kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? How things going to be? We, we don't think long. We think about right now. Yeah. How's things going to be? How, how is folks going to view me? Is anybody don't want to talk to me anymore? Anybody want to really be my friend and, 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 and tell me anything? We don't think that long down the line. We think about our right now instantaneous gratification. Period. Go ahead. Is something you want to add on that, Sergeant? No, no, you exactly what you said. Sorry. Exactly what you said, Kat. Um, from there, stay in the same book, 2813. I think okay. I missed the verse over there. 2813. The book of Sirach, chapter 28, verse 13. Curse the whisperer and double tongue. The Lord said, curse the whisperer and double tongue. Whisperer, going back to my... Let me tell you something. Did you know... Hey, hold on. Sis, sis, sis. Hey, hey, was you at the Sabbath? You know she wasn't at the Sabbath. She wasn't even there. Hey, sis, you know, hey, was you at the Sabbath? You know she wasn't there. Hey, let me tell you what happened at the Sabbath. Girl, you wouldn't believe. Yeah, such and such got stood up. Yeah, this is what was going on. And they don't even know what's going on. Judges, don't, we don't bring out everything up in there. They add all to, yeah, oh, he was over there doing this and that and the other. He was doing that and that. Yeah, he was doing Yeah, he was right there. And then, you know, I always thought he was doing All this long little soliloquy. What they got to do with the person now? God forbid somebody got to get, well, judgment of the Lord. Somebody got to get put up out of here. Is that something to run around and tell everybody to put somebody out? You think, I, I hate to have to put anybody up out of here. I'm going to be honest, completely honest with you. Because you would expect for folks to correct themselves before I get that. But what does that mean to run and tell you? Hey, did you know such and such happened? Oh, you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Oh, did, did, what's all that? We got to check our spirit. something off with our spirit that we got to examine. We got to acknowledge and correct it. Acknowledge and correct it. Read it again. Curse the whisperer. Curse the whisperer. double tongue. What double tongue is? It's like somebody that say one thing to your face, and then when I get around somebody else, I say something different. Absolutely. Hey, but didn't you say, I don't remember saying that. No, I, I ain't saying that. Well, you know what? If I said it, it didn't mean that. What the hell are you talking about? Something wrong with the man. I said it. Hey, I told the brother that you were evil, but I didn't mean it like you evil. Yeah, you said, it's hey, look out. Hey, keep, keep a lookout on for, for that. So you got to watch her. 
But I wasn't saying that in no type of evil way. If, you tell, if I tell you to watch out for somebody, what, 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 what am I saying? What am I really saying? <laughs> and I'm telling you to watch them like security? Or, I mean, what, what, is you on security? You ain't on security. We got to be mindful. We'll convince ourselves that the evilness we're saying ain't really evil. The scripture talks about woe unto them they call evil good. We ain't gonna call nothing that's evil good around there. The evil is gonna be declared as being evil, all right? Hey, real quick, Cap. A lot of times they just wanna test you. It's called contingency talk, meaning mm -hmm. they'll throw something out there to see if, if you're gonna bite it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and hey, that class, man, what's, what's that? I don't like that class. Yeah, I ain't like it either. Got you. As mm -hmm. soon as you start agreeing with that off spirit, got you. Mm -hmm. They're trying to catch you. And the Bible talks extensively about this. Verse 13. Verse yeah. 13. Curse the whisperer and double tongue. Watch this. For such have destroyed many that were at peace. Y'all see that? Many times folks ain't had no problem with nobody, been doing good. They repenting, getting their spirit right. The next thing you know, some, you know what's been crazy? It's been instances where we've been dealing with a whole nother totally different situation. As we doing our due diligence and in investigating that, we found out some other evil was going on. Something that ain't even had nothing to do with you, but the Lord let that thing reveal your wicked behind. That happens like damn near all the time. <laughs> we getting on one person about what's going on. Well, you know, I got that from sister. From who? Sister, what you call her told me? Sister, what you call her? What's going on here? Oh, well, I got that from sister. Damn, all y'all just talking about this person. What's going on here? We got to get our minds right. We got to get our minds right. Read the whole verse again. I want you to jump. Curse the whisperer and double tongue, for such have destroyed many that were at peace. Watch this. Jump down to verse 24 and 25. Verse 24. Look that thou hedge thy possession about with thorns. Read it again. Look that thou hedge thy possession about with thorns mm -hmm. and bind up thy silver and gold. Watch this. And weigh thy words in a balance uh -huh. and make a door and bar for, the, for thy mouth. So th just like the Lord, he's using an analogy, right? He said, just like if you had a possession, you don't put thorns around there to do what? To protect your possession, right? Then it says, um, what's the next part? And weigh. It said, and bind up thy silver and gold. If you got silver and gold, you ain't just laying it out for anybody to be able to grab it and take it. You putting that up somewhere to hold it to yourself, right? Then it says, and weigh. Read, read verse 25. And weigh thy words in a balance. So the Lord said, just like how you take the carefulness to protect your possession, to protect your gold and silver, why you ain't going the same uh, mouth to watch what comes out of your mouth? And how would it be received? What effect would it have to a person? Like I said again, a lot of times, nine times out of ten, I'm sorry don't really work no more with folks nowadays. It depends on the gravity of what you did. You, if you don't broke somebody trust and told their business, yeah, I forgive you, but I sure ain't telling you a damn thing ever again. Yeah. And it take a while for that spirit to get off of sister. Because guess what that sister done do? It, it's some sisters that have been hurt by other sisters, and they'll never say um, um, to another sister, don't talk to her, nothing like that. But you know what? It manifests when it's time for us to collectively do things. You don't want to work with that sister. You know what? Now you know what I'm saying. Oh, oh y'all getting together to do what? Oh, she don't be there? Yeah, you know, uh, I ain't going to be able to make it out there. I, I'll be all right. I don't want to be around her. I don't want to be around. I don't like, you know, I just don't like being around a lot of people. We know what that statement means. I really don't like being around a lot of people. She, somebody done hurt her. She don't want to be around them. We got to be careful of our actions. From there, give me Psalms. We still did dealing with gossip. Psalms 39 and 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 39. <clears throat> I'm going to give you another one. Can I get another example? Hey, psst, psst. Hey, um, hey, brothers. Hey, um, why did it remind us of the Lord's high holy day? Hey, did you know that the new moon is coming up? Hey, did you know? They're supposed to let us know that the new moon is coming up. Let me ask y'all something real quick. What scripture in the Bible does it say that I have to tell you when, when, when the Lord's high holy days is? Anybody? 
When the Lord said it was three times a year, we have to come up to Jerusalem, right? Did somebody have to go around? Hey, Joe, it's almost about that time. You as an Israelite supposed to knew when it was time to go up. It wasn't nobody going around. Hey, you know, hey, um, it's about that time for us to go up to uh, Jerusalem for, for the feast. No, you're supposed to know God's laws, his high holy days he gave us to know what to do. So anybody that think that, oh yeah, you know, I, I got to remind you on a weekly basis, give you, shoot you updates on God's high holy days, you might be in the wrong place. Now, I'm a, if, if there's a scripture, somebody let me know what scripture it is. I'll give it a minute. Any scriptures? Is there any story in the Bible where our forefathers had to be reminded to keep God's laws? I hope you all can. In other words, when did David tell his mighty men, hey, the new moon's coming up. Get ready. The Feast of Purim is coming up. Hey, uh, Harai. What's the other one? Um, all, the, all the guys' names. Joab and them. Hey, the new moon's tomorrow. Come on. Come on, you serious? They was Israelites. We, was, we kept God's laws. This they already do. knew. They planned. They already know. Now, man, we make announcements of when we're going to be here, what time, and folks need to send in funds or something. Of course, we announce that. But you should know when that Lord's high holy days is as a repentant Israelite man and woman. You should know, well, Lord, I didn't keep your new moon because Captain Ramia didn't let me know. He supposed to call me and let me know, hey, sister, you know tomorrow's the new moon, right? Is you crazy? Now go back to the curtain. That's a crazy mind. I'm sorry. That's a crazy mind. I get that scripture, trust in men. And then you, you call around. And somebody should have corrected that, brother. I'm, 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 I'm a little bit upset. Somebody should have. What'd you say, bro? Yeah. It was brothers that said, yeah, I got a calendar. I ain't talking about that. That's why they make it. They make it a little bit easier to, <laughs> for me to remember because... <laughs> It's a calendar. Wait, so he gave a solution. He didn't want to hear the solution. No, no, no. So that, it wasn't no. about the high holy day. No, to hell with that calendar. I want you to use up your minutes and call me and let me know when the next Lord's high holy day is. Psalms 39 and 1. 39 and 1. Read that. I please. said I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Watch this. It said, I, I said I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. That I sin not. How can we sin with our tongue? Somebody got an example for me? Let's get an example of that line with the tongue. I mean sinning with the tongue. I'm sorry. Leviticus 19, 16, please. The book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer uh -oh, among thy people. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is a tailbearer, brothers? going around telling people business. From You're one going person around. To Whoever that will entertain it, you telling it. Right? Read on. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer among thy people. Uh -huh. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. So it says, thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer. That is a, an example of a sin with thy tongue. Give me, um, let's get some solutions on that mouth. How can we fix that mouth? Um, go to Sirach 6 and 5. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 5. Sweet language will multiply friends, and a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. I want you to read it again. Sweet language will multiply friends. So we got to learn, learn how to have sweet language. What is that talking about? Does that say we got to learn French? Wee, oui, wee, oui, wee. Oui. Wee oui, wee, oui. my brother right here. Shalom, shalom, uh, shalom. Exalting your brothers and sisters. Being able to exhort positive words, right? Yes, sir. So give me some examples of some positive language, some sweet language, so I know you understand. Um, bring it out. <laughs> That's bring, a, bring, that's bring a positive out. word for somebody bringing out the bring scriptures. Out, that's somebody that's in the spirit that's bringing it out. How about some sweet language that sisters can you utilize with each other? Um, example of sweet language is just by giving a compliment. Um, like, for example, I see a sister and I like her dress. Um, Shalom, sis, most high in Christ, bless. I love how that dress is looking on you today. Or um, 
I don't know, just um. What if sisters? I'm, I, I'm finna challenge you. I'm staying with you, sis. Okay. What if a sister is hard for them to give a compliment because they still battling a jealous spirit? Okay. So they can't compliment you on your attire because you kind of look better in your attire than how they feel about themselves at the particular time. So what's another way we can verbally express um, kindness? It could be, um, you know, just, just saying that you're happy to see them, that they made it to Y'all heard that? How many of y'all here on a daily basis somebody is happy to see you? Never. I don't hear Do y'all hear Y'all brother see that? I don't hear it. <laughs> you go to work every day. Jeff Boston saying they're happy to see you. That means something. That's a sweet word. What else? Who got another example for me? I'm happy to see you. Some folks can't do that. So does your phone. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Um, a good example would be to ask somebody how they've been, like more than just how are you Ooh. for that day, but you know. Y'all see that? Through. So how you been? What does that show when you make that statement? That you genuinely care about whatever it is. That's concern. How you been? How was your week? I'm gl it's, it's good to see you. That, we can start there and dialogue from there. That That's something we can practice, right? So for some of y'all, put that on the stick it, put it all around your damn house, the car, and practice saying that because that's not natural. You just come in, shalom. And some of y'all are kind of rough sisters. Y'all, y'all gotta put on y'all femininity too. Hey, but yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we we gotta get back to to that. All right, um, is that all of it? Six, no, read verse five again. Read, verse read five, on. sweet language will multiply friends, and a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. If you talk like that, you think folks would want to talk to you? If you was expressing kind words like that, but if you just Got nothing but nastiness to say. Nobody, Shalom says, and somebody don't be beeline away from your behind. So watch this. Read on. Watch this. Be in peace with many. The Bible says, being everybody in here ain't gonna be the best of friends. But you should be able to sit next to any sister and have a, a sweet language conversation. You should be able to sit next to any brother and have a sweet language conversation. If you found yourself up in here and you only could come and talk to those three brothers over there, you the devil. If you come in here and you only talk to the same four sisters that you talk to all week, you talk to them in here, and it's another 60-something sisters in here that you don't never speak to, you are the devil. If you come in here and you only talk to the same four sisters that you talk to all week, you talk to them in here, and it's another 60-something sisters in here, that you don't never speak to, you are the devil. I want you to understand that clear. That's not a righteous spirit. Go ahead, Art. Hey, Captain. You know, a lot of times, y'all sisters that do that, you tell on yourself. And you know how I know? I know personally because I'm moving around with security because you sit next to the same two or three sisters every time you hear. Every single time you hear you right next to that same sister, them same two sisters, and what you're telling on yourself is that I just came here to be close to them. That's called forming small little cliques. That's how the Christian church got the reputation that they got because the older sisters think they better than this sisters and the young girls talking about the older girls, and it's the same thing that, that try to trickle into Israel, and the way to shut it down is by taking the lessons and the notes from this class and actually applying it. If you sitting right now next to the person you sat to the last four times you came here, something is wrong. And next time you walk through the doors, because we ain't changing seats now, it's too much. Next time you walk through the door, make sure you sit next to a sister you ain't never sat next to. Ask her how her week has been, how things have been in her life. That's how you can help try to build that sisterhood that we trying to build. But if you just buddy-buddy with one or two sisters, we ain't gonna get nowhere. Hey, officer, I'm gonna back you up. Cause remember when we first came in, it was only us four. When me and Cat, when Cat uh, and you was here, me and you was here, it's just me and you. <laughs> we had no choice but to speak to one another. Look around. If you're talking to two or three people, that's called a click. That's called a click. And the devil, he loves to work with clicks. We are not about clicks in here. We are a nation. It's nation time. The nation of Israel. So if you you only hang around two or three people, that is the devil. Meaning you're deceiving yourself. 
But if, if a number of all this, so you've been coming here for months, and if I don't know three things about you, whether it's your name, where you're from, whatever, it's something wrong with me. How am I coming here every week? We seeing each other every week, and I don't know you. So, if I, hey, what's the sister's name? I don't know. Now, I know I'm new here. I'm, I, I, I'm still adjusting face to names. But you've been there two, three. Hey, what's the sister's name? I don't know that sister's name. You don't know the sister's name? What's that brother's name? I don't, I don't know. Damn, you sit right next to him. We got to do better. We are a family coming together around here, all right? Um, is that the whole verse on that? Give me that whole verse, verse 6. Okay, verse 6. Be in peace with many. Never be at peace with many. That means you don't have to be besties with everybody up in there, but you should be able to get along with everybody up in there. You should be cordial with everybody up in there. You should want to see peace and success with everybody up in there. You should be wishing, man, I hope she fall and break both her ankles. What's up? We shouldn't be feeling If that's your spirit, you got to repent. That's the devil on you, all right? Nevertheless, but... Have one counselor of a thousand. Now, here we go. This is the point I wanted to get to. Verse 7. It says, nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. Counselor means this is the person, hey, I'm going through something. I know you've been in this truth for a while. and been Not that you've been here a couple of months or even a couple. I know that you don't went. You, that's why counsel is very important. And this is how you stop your business from being told to every damn body. Pay close attention, sisters. Your personal matters that you need scriptural counsel to make a move on should be told to somebody that's been this true for a minute, that went through things, been through things, and going to actually give you scriptures. Not just you tell me your whole matter. Girl, shoot, that's messed up. Shoot, if it was me, if they give you a if it was me, you know that ain't, ain't nothing scriptural finna come behind that. That's all... Uh, what's the woman name on there? Um, Bernita, Ber Ber Bernita, you didn't hear that from me? That's that kind of understanding finna getting ready to come out. You ain't finna get a righteous counsel out this Bible. Understand that. Read on. Watch this. If that would is get a friend. So now if you is going to if if you do want to have a friend or friends, this is what you got to do. Prove him first. And be not hasty. To credit him. I want to deal with the last part before going back into um, the proven part. And it says, and be not hasty to credit him. You know what a lot of sisters do? Because you was the person that sat next to me and spoke to me, you finna be the person I tell everything to. And you know, a lot of times what I've been noticing over the years, and it's just the way it is, I don't know why, majority of the folks that are real social initially is the ones that do all the gossiping because they're trying to get, 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 get that info. It's sad, but the ones that really want to come over there and be, hey, how you doing? Woo, woo, woo. If they ain't on a welcoming team, that person is the one that want to get that info. And go, hey, yeah, you know that new woman? She crazy as hell. Yeah, you know what she told me? That's what it be. Don't be hasty to credit the person. We have to learn how to build friendships. Like I said I, I, all the time, majority of friendships in the world is built off drama and hate. Majority of y'all close friends, examine it. Y'all was friends because y'all mutually didn't like a person. That's majority. It's very few friendships that started off something genuine. You know, you know, you know he was around the block, was in the same class. Some folks, I didn't like that person, you didn't like that person. We finna be cool. We both hate that person. You can't build that kind of relationship. You build relationships off these laws. You prove a person how. How we prove a person? We, do we prove them by telling your, them your most intimate, detailed, personal business? Do, do you start the friendship off, oh, yeah, you know, I'm glad to be in this truth. Yeah, you know I used to be a hooker for 18 years. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hey, proving a friend ain't confessional time. Y'all heard me? I'm going to say it again. Proving a friend ain't confessional time. You prove them by what? This Bible. What are we doing here at the school? Sisters coming out doing things. Is your conversation on how to make things go further in the truth? Talk about family. Talk, but your personal business that if somebody else knew, 
would embarrass you, you might want to hold that to yourself and keep that to that counselor of one. Is everybody clear on that? You sisters clear on that? All right, all because y'all went out to um, Denny's don't mean that's time to tell all your business. She picked you up from the bus stop. Down means time to tell her all your business. She watched your kids for you a few times. That don't mean you not tell her all your deep, dark secrets. She gave you a pretty hair wrap. <laughs> I'm trying to think of different instances where, you know, once that happened, that, that means let me divulge everything to her. We don't do that, y'all, all right? You'll get turned a bad turn if you um, go around this scriptural council right here. Hey, Cap, right? Hey, you know in my Bible where it says, prove him first, it says, get him in the time of trouble. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Let you know, when you when you down and out, that's who you know your friends are. <laughs> Y'all heard that? And that takes time. I'm going to say it again. That? In my Bible, it says, get him in the time of trouble. <laughs> so when you are down and out, that's, how, that's when you're going to know who your true friends are. And mm-hmm. that takes time. That don't take six months, one year. Maybe not even two years. It takes Hey, you won't know what the test is for you brothers. A real friend is going to tell you when you're wrong. To your face. You hear some evil, hey, bro, you know you out the spirit, right? Not nobody that, hey, I, you told me something evil, but I don't want to hurt your feelings. If you want them, I don't want to hurt your feelings, you'll never be nobody real friend. I don't know what you call that. A real friend is going to look out for you, going to tell you when you're right and when you're wrong, especially when, when you're wrong. You brothers understand that? If you appear with the whole, um, I didn't want to hurt your feelings, I didn't want you to get mad, I didn't want you to be upset, please, I don't want you around me, I'm going to tell you straight. That, that kind of person gets you killed. We're supposed to be able to tell each other when we're wrong, because we wrong a lot more times than we write, believe it or not. Something you want to add to that? Yeah, real quick. This is Proverbs 27, verse 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. <laughs> Read that again. <laughs> oh, that's an excellent scripture. That's what Peter said. Read it again. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 6. Uh-huh. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. How would a friend wound you? Because he told your behind, or she told your behind you was wrong. And you didn't want to hear it at that time, but that's what you needed to hear to get your doggone mind right. That's faithful, faithful wounds. Finish that verse. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. You know what that kisses is? I know you're wrong as hell, but you know, you're my girl. You're my man. I ain't finna hurt your feelings. Now, hurt my feelings, hurt her feelings for her to get herself right. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us.
more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.